Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So this week, again, chance to do a bit of charcoal landscape drawing. I say charcoal landscape drawing, it's really charcoal and graphite. It's using these Durant Excel blocks again. I'm also using that same paper that I talked about a couple of weeks ago, I guess. It's that brown, brownish craft paper rather than drawing paper. But I do kind of like the combination of these Derwent blocks and the, the toned paper, especially the brownish tan paper. I think the colours kind of go well together. This week um, I was doing a little bit of research on, I'm really into the sort of history of art and I was doing a bit of research on the early days of Impressionism. In particular, how one event, how that impacted on the artists who are most associated with the Impressionist movement. And the event was uh, the Franco-Prussian War, I guess one of many wars between German-speaking people and the French. And like most of these wars in Europe, it was just basically leaders who were worried about losing power or leaders who wanted to gain more power, that sort of thing. Germany as a country didn't exist at that time. It was the north part of what would now be Germany and stretching all the way out through what would now be Poland. That was something like the North German Alliance or North German Confederation or something like that. It was busy Prussia with a few smaller states sort of forced into Prussia, if you like. There was also a number of independent German speaking states in the south, but Germany as a country didn't exist, not yet anyway. But the Prussians wanted to unify all of the German speaking people. The French were worried about this because that would have meant Germany would then be a much bigger and much more powerful country than France. They were also worried about Spain and what was happening in Spain because a couple of years before that there was a, a revolution in Spain and the, the monarch, the Queen of Spain, was overthrown which left them with no monarch. They decided they would like a new monarch, um, a new king. So they approached, uh, I don't know, some German aristocrat or something and asked him if he would like to become the king of Spain and this worried the French because they thought they would then have a, a kind of unified Germany to the east and a, a German allied Spain to the south. So I'd say they were worried about their power in, in Europe so they decided to start a war which became known as the Franco-Prussian War. I think in France, though, it's called maybe the 1870 war or something like that. And it, it's, when you study the, the history, it's interesting how these political events can impact so many lives. And of course it impacted the lives of many of the artists who were associated with the early days of the Impressionist movement and sort of late 1860s into the 1870, 1871, this is still the very early days of Impressionism. It's almost, Impressionism doesn't really exist yet, or it's just beginning to emerge. There was a sort of core group of artists who were friends, um, spent a lot of time together. They went out into the countryside and painted together. So they were exchanging ideas and techniques and and that's really where what we th think of impressionism, that's where it really got going. These artists include uh, Claude Monet, Renoir, Alfred Sisley, and also a guy who I think is not nearly as well known, um, Frederick Basile. Basile was, um, his parents were quite rich, so he had a lot of money, or at least compared to the other guys like Claude Monet and Renoir and stuff, 
Basile had a lot of money. Um, that's mainly because those other guys had virtually no money. But Basile helped them. Um, he provided them with space in his studio. He had quite a large studio. Um, he helped them with buying art materials, things like that. And he was certainly, he spent a lot of time with Monet and Renoir and Sisley and those guys. So I'd say there was this early period where they were starting to exchange ideas and developing what we now know as Impressionism. But then along came this war and that disrupted everything. And there was a draft in, in France where men were being called up to serve in the military. Alfred Sisley, I don't think he was actually a French citizen. His parents were English and I think he was still classed as being English rather than being French by the French government. But anyway, he did sort of escape from the, the fighting and he went back to London. And he was joined by Claude Monet. Renoir, for some reason, I don't know why, ended up in the French Pyrenees training horses for the French cavalry. I don't know if he had any experience training horses before the war, but anyway, that's where he ended up. But I suppose from his point of view, it was a, a safe posting. He was in the military, but he was well away, he was in the, well away from the, the fighting, which was mostly in the north of France, uh, nowhere near the front line. And, just dealing with horses every day. Degas, Degas is one of those people, the artist who is often labeled as an impressionist, but I would argue he wasn't an impressionist and he didn't, um, although he took part in the impressionist exhibitions, he wasn't part of that little group that went out and painted outdoors and things and started developing these ideas. Degas had his own way of working and his own ideas. And, but anyway, he's sometimes associated with Impressionism. He joined the French National Guard, but like a lot of military, um, when you're joining the military, I guess you have to do a medical and during that medical, it was discovered that he did have problems with his eyes. He had a disease or something that affected his retinas. In later life, of course, he essentially went blind. He could still make out some bright colors and some shapes, but he was essentially blind. But then he was posted to Paris. The, at that stage, in the early stage of the war, wasn't directly affected. So I guess, again, he had a relatively safe posting. But there's some other things that impacted the early days of Impressionism. As I say, Monet ended up in London. And while he was in London, we know that he visited museums and he did see the works of Constable and Turner, two English artists from I guess from the 18th century. And a lot of art critics say that obviously, obviously uh, the work of Constable and Turner influenced Monet's painting and then therefore influenced the early days of Impressionism. Claude Monet himself though says that this was not true and he was never influenced by Turner. So I don't know. Um, believe whoever you want to believe, but there's some disagreement there. The other big impact of the war was on an artist who's maybe not as well known, Frédéric Basile. He was one of the friends of Sicily and Renoir and Monet and those guys. Um, and he often joined them on their painting exhibitions. But he joined um, an infantry unit in the French army. So he was on the front line and unfortunately he was killed. He was only 28 years old. So I think his body of work that still exists, there's only about 60 paintings in the world that we attribute to Basile. So we don't know how much of an effect he would have had on the Impressionist movement. 
as I say, it, it's interesting, if interesting is the right word, scary perhaps, how these political events can impact so many different lives. Uh, the lives of artists, people that you wouldn't normally associate with military activity. This is um, one of the final drawings. This was the first drawing that you saw, the one that I kind of forgot to turn the camera on. Um, again, I was happy with the final results. And I still enjoy using these uh, Durant Excel blocks. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching and hopefully see you in next week's video.